tribal trails, tribal trails. The Son of God, He is near. He chose to walk with us. These tribal trails. I do work in senior home care. And it was all instrumental of me working with my mom. Oh, okay. She was my teacher. It gave me a passion for taking care of anyone in care. Okay. To make sure that they are looked after properly. Mm -hmm. King Solomon said, I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Sometimes God will take us in directions we least expect. Yes. That certainly isn't something I would have seen myself doing yeah. even up to 10 years ago. Hmm. But it's what I'm doing now. <laughs> what did Teresa do 10 years ago? How did her mother become instrumental in leading her into the career of senior home care? I'm glad that you can stay with us as we find out together from our guests the answers to those questions. Teresa was born in Merrifield, Saskatchewan. Her parents were war veterans. After the Second World War, they returned to Canada and settled in Saskatchewan. The family stayed there until Teresa's father was sick with cancer. Then they moved to Edmonton. Unfortunately, he passed away when Teresa was four years old. For family support, her mother moved back to her hometown in St. Albert, Alberta. Well, I went to school in St. Albert for the first um, grades one to four. Okay. And then once my mom had remarried, we moved to Edmonton mm -hmm. and I continued my schooling there. Okay. And I took, um, I went on to the early childhood program in Lac La Biche, Alberta at AVC uh, several years later after I graduated grade 12. Mm, okay. And then I worked with preschoolers after that. <laughs> okay. So did you hear about God in your earlier life? I did. We went to church mm -hmm. as, as a family, um, not so much when we were living in Saskatchewan, but once my mother was a widow, um, she took us to church faithfully every Sunday. Oh, okay. And we heard about God and we heard about Jesus. Okay. And um, I received Christ as my Savior um, in uh, March of 1980 when I had moved out to Barhead, Alberta. I was working out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I was uh, saved through 100 Huntley Street TV ministry. Okay. God gave up His Son for me upon of Calvary He said his precious blood to save my soul And I never could repay The sacrifice he made and with my life I paid the debt I owe. I'm willing, Lord, to go. I'm willing, Lord, to stay. I'm willing, Lord, to do Thy perfect will. In the valleys I may go To do thy will of God I'll walk alone To climb the highest hill God gave up his son for me upon that Calvary. He shed his precious blood to save my soul and I never could repay that sacrifice he made but with my life, I'll pay the debt I owe. These words have painted a picture of God's redemptive plan and the purpose of a Christian life. The Apostle Paul also mentioned that when he wrote to the believers in Corinth, he said, you are not your own, you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. In other words, as a follower of Jesus Christ, 
my life is an instrument in the hand of God to bring his blessing to the world. The Bible says, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. Because Jesus has paid the penalty for all my sins on Calvary, God does not count them against me. That's how I can have freedom from guilt and shame to serve the living God. And I wouldn't trade any treasure in this world for the freedom that I have in Christ. So I encourage you to join me by asking Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life. It's a big decision and it will change you for the better. If you need help, feel free to call us here at Tribal Trails. And then how did God lead in your life after that? Because I was already working with children and he had given me such a joy in working with kids, mm -hmm. becoming a Christian put that, that real interest in me to, um, to really share the word with, with children. But the Lord was showing me um, that he wanted me to be actively involved in church mm -hmm. and to grow and to share the word with children. So I started out in an inner city mission when I came back to Edmonton. At Pentecost, Peter addressed the crowd. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. And there was a, an inner city bus ministry at that time at the big church that I was going to. The mission was an outreach of this big church um, that had 900 people in it. <laughs> and so I was really seeing, I was praying and I was asking the Lord, Lord, what do I do? And when I slept, he gave me this incredible dream. Mm -hmm. And I was walking along this walkway and it's like, the, you know, the Lord was there to, to guide me. And the Lord was saying, now come and follow me. Yeah. I have something for you to do. Hmm. And I, then I was, I was in this um, kitchen yeah. and we were serving food oh. to children at a table. And this was very natural for me because I was working with children in a daycare setting. And it was a Christian daycare that uh, I was working in at this point. And one of the staff that was in this dream, and she said, come, let us feed the children. Hmm. And I said, and what are we having today? And she said, fish and chips. Oh. <laughs> and so I went to the table and there was a little child there and the child had hollow eyes. Aww. And he looked at me and he said, feed me, Aww. feed me. And I remember that scripture verse where Jesus met Peter on the shore. Yeah. And he said, Peter, do you love me? Yeah. Then feed my sheep. Do you love me? Then feed my lambs. Yeah. And in this daycare where I was in, we called our little ones, the tiny ones, the lambs. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the older ones were the sheep. I mean, it was, it was, it was great. But it was such a, um, a powerful witness for yeah. me. It was very clear of what the Lord was leading me into. Yeah. Um, I did work in bus ministry in the inner city, and he allowed me to be in there with one of my dearest of friends who was also instrumental in me becoming a Christian. Oh, okay. We worked this bus ministry together and brought kids all the way from the inner city, all the way over to Millwoods oh. in Edmonton. And I did that for, for a couple of years. So I have attended um, other churches since then but in each church that God has taken me into, there is a strong Christian um, witness of the gospel and also of children's ministry. The greatest joy you can ever give a child is to know that they are loved by God. Mm -hmm. um, they will make far better choices in life when they are led by the Holy Spirit early on. And I heard a mouth 
to say Lift up your life today It's time to reap the golden harvest field There's work for you to do My strength I gave to you There are millions on earth that never heard my name I'm willing, Lord, to go I'm willing, Lord, to stay I'm willing, Lord, to do thy perfect will And the valleys I may go to do the will of God, how up the Lord who climbed the highest hill. In 2007, my mom became very ill. She was elderly at that time. She had a very serious heart condition and uh, so therefore needed specific care. She came home from the hospital with um, with oxygen and with additional medication. Yeah. And it was necessary for me to really reach out to the healthcare community to see what was available for a person in care at home. And it was a daunting task because they don't come to your door. No. You have to go out to them. Yeah. And God taught me through that what it means to be an advocate for anyone mm -hmm. who is in care. Mm -hmm. that it's such a serious task and that they're depending on you. And I had to pray a lot of times. I felt like a fish out of water. It was not something I felt that I was best at, mm -hmm. but I knew I loved my mom so much and mm -hmm. she had done so much for us. Yeah. She deserved the same yeah. from us. The Bible says parents are the pride of their children. You can tell that Teresa is proud of her mother. She explains why. My mom taught me to kneel and pray. And I yeah. saw that from the very start when my, mm -hmm. when my dad died in 1958. I saw my mom pray a lot. She'd go into a little chapel every day after work and pray. And mm -hmm. she would bring us to church. Yeah. She didn't just say, would you like to go today? Yeah. She would say, we are going today. And so we were given the option as we got older, but we had to go. And the same thing, you know, my stepfather and her would bring us. And so those early grounding times, mm -hmm. even though I was confused with who God is and where I was to be, I knew that they were bowing their knee mm -hmm. to sovereign God. Yeah. And that was very significant for me to see. Yes. I must tell Jesus of my trials I cannot bear these burdens alone in my distress he kindly will help me he ever loves and cares for his own I must tell Jesus But ask him, he will deliver. Make of my troubles quickly an end. So I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. 
so that began the care. And uh, I lived in my own home, but I came over every day yeah. to take care of her. I'd read to her, uh, make meals for her, and get her to doctor's appointments, just like she would with us when we were small. You know, I had to make sure someone was looking in on her. Oh, okay. I couldn't just leave her by herself. Okay. Um, anyone who is a caregiver, you can't just take off on a holiday. Mm -hmm. You have to know that you have hmm. someone who's going to be there. Hmm. And so that was the task. And when my mom moved into elder care, long-term care, um, it was really important that I still continue to advocate. Mm -hmm. because the healthcare system as it is, it's very difficult. The staffing is limited. And so therefore, the advocates are, have to be there to oversee things. Yeah. And uh, I did that until my mom passed away in September. Yeah, I can see that that was very difficult on you, the passing of your yeah. mom. How did God help you through that? He prepared me early on. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably just like starting six years ago because my mom was so ill that we thought maybe she might die mm -hmm. early on. Mm -hmm. And so the grieving and the mourning for my mom started very early on. And as her health progressed and advanced, uh, like the, you know, it, the, the, the need for care increased. Um, and she was weakening more and more. Yeah. It was it was very hard. It was it was probably one of the most bitter, most sweet, most glorious, most painful times of my life, seeing my mom so sick. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. He really showed me to go to his word and also to really call out to the church family okay. to be prayer warriors. Okay. Uh, to, to really ask the Lord for wisdom because there were times I wasn't taking care of myself physically or emotionally. And at times, not even spiritually, I was just really getting mm -hmm. worn out. Yeah. Uh, the Lord really showed me I needed His wisdom. Yeah. And as each stage came along, I realized that I had to go to resources yeah. in the community again to show me what to do for the next step of care. Oh, I see. yeah. And uh, that was, you know, from home to hospital to long-term care. Mm -hmm. It was probably one of the most bitter, most sweet, most glorious, most painful times of my life, seeing my mom so sick. Yeah. Because, you, you know, loving someone and seeing them ill is very hard. The Lord was prompting me before mom had passed, the months before he was saying, get ready. Mm. Your mom is going to pass soon. It's like a, a gentle whisper. It isn't something where you're yeah. booming in my head, but yes. it was just a gentle mm -hmm. prompting. Your mom is going to pass. Get ready. Your mom is yeah. going to pass. Therefore, I, I realized, oh, Lord, you know, and part of me wanted her to be not in pain anymore. Yeah. I didn't want her suffering, mm -hmm. but part of me said, this is my mom. Yeah. I don't want her to go. Yeah. I already had my biological dad and my stepfather pass, mm -hmm. and this was really tough. Yeah. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. Tell Jesus, and He will help me over the world, the victory to win. So I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must. 
must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. God was stirring in me to get my church family in to, to pray yeah. Yeah. Uh, for my mom. And I was saying, well, Lord, I pray that it will happen soon because I don't want her to pass before they come. And um, God's timing is never off. No. He's right on time. On the very night that my mom was to pass was the night that I had arranged for them to come. And I had done this about a week before where I had called them and said, could you come on such and yeah. such a day? Throughout that day, mm -hmm. I was so thankful that my mom was able to see all of her children oh. and her grandchildren. Yeah. And periodically throughout the day and some days before that, they were coming in. So mom was never really completely alone at any time. She was uh, surrounded by family mm. at different moments. And in those last a uh, few hour, hour and uh, like a, a half hour yeah. that my pastor and uh, oh. there were a couple of church family members that come. We prayed around her bed. And I remember mm. saying, I really hope God brings his best angels. And my pastor mm. said, <laughs> let's just pray one better that Jesus come himself. <laughs> and we prayed, we, we read the word, we sang to Jesus. And uh, I had walked them out, and I was coming back. Mm -hmm. And when I came back, I was checking on Mom because mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure she was okay. She, she by this time, was f experiencing pain, so I wanted to make sure there was enough medication. And I realized she wasn't breathing. <sighs> Part of me was devastated that I wasn't in the room at that very time. I just thought, oh, Mom, I'm so sorry. But then I realized mm -hmm. Jesus came while I was out of the room. Yeah. So she had the best thing happen. Yeah. And I know she's with the Lord. Yeah. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I know with the passing of someone that you love, it's not always easy mm. on the family. Can you share with us how the family came together under um, this, uh, I guess maybe you'd say crisis or the passing of your mom? Mm -hmm. um, the different personalities that God gave us uh, to be able to cope with different areas of care for mom, even from the start when she became very sick. And um, I saw where God was using me to be there, you know, as, as a caregiver. But there were other areas of um, to how others are used sometimes in areas of the finances. Mm. Um, areas of, if they're living long distance, they come in and they, they give you breaks and they let you have the rest that you need. Yeah. And they take that time with mom. Oh, yeah. uh, people who will come and visit, you know, faithfully each week on a, a certain day, bring oh. her to church. And I know my mom appreciated it oh, yeah. um, in various ways because she loves her children so much and her grandchildren. And even following with the, um, you know, mom's passing, um, how our family came to visit her before she, she left us. And in preparing for the funeral, mm. just pulling together, working together for the honor of our mom. Mm. And for me, just knowing that we want to honor God and honoring our mom. Jesus said, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. I was so grateful for my siblings. They did a wonderful uh, help mm -hmm. in uh, preparing the funeral. My mom was given a full honor guard oh. of a military person oh. with the last post bugle yeah. and, and with with the bagpipes yeah. and the color party, oh. standing at attention. And I thought, yes, <laughs> that's for you, Mom. Yeah. 
thank God for my mom. What an honor. Teresa's mother deserves such honor because she had devoted her life to serve the Lord by raising her children in His way and being a light in dark places. Teresa has more to say about her parents as we conclude this program. But before she returns, may I ask, how's your walk with the Lord? If you'd like to talk to someone about that, don't hesitate to call us here at Tribal Trails. They were caregivers for those who were ill and dying. And so it really set a strong example yes. how that can be done and patterned by, by the family who are, are still here. So I'm very grateful for all these experiences. It helps to build our character yes, and to does. build our faith and to help us to be more sensitive to others mm -hmm. in their trials. Mm -hmm. Everyone who knows the love of Jesus and everyone who's seen what God can do can tell a dying world of His forgiveness and share the hope that lives inside of you. For in the heart of every true believer Burns the light of love's eternal flame And if we simply lift that light toward heaven It will drive the darkness out in Jesus' name So let it shine, let it shine takes a little light to be a beacon in the night. Let it shine, let it shine. If they're ever gonna know, we've got to let it show, let it shine. written on your heart. So let the light of faith shine for His glory. Do all you can with all God's given you. For now the fields are truly ripe to harvest. You'll be amazed at what a little light can do. Shine. 